Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private. Hey action fan, it's review time. Today I'm looking at Legend of Korra, The Guide. The episode begins with Korra's arrival at the Eastern Air Temple. After bringing Tenzin and the rest of the Scooby Gang up to speed, the race is on to break into the spirit world. Under the guidance of Master Tenzin, the team gets absolutely nowhere. But in a twist worthy of Stephen King, daughter number one has The Shining. The difference is he was being original. Jinora follows some spirit bunny things to a Stonehenge knockoff that's infested with bat demons. But Korra uses that handy-dandy spirit calming power taught to her by old Uncle Unlock and clears them out. Finally, Tenzin gives up the ghost, so to speak, and stops trying to enter the spirit world himself and lets Korra and Jinora dive headlong down the rabbit hole. Meanwhile, over at Camp Unlock, he's taken the kids on a sightseeing trip to the spirit world. But the trip turns sour when the portal to the north they're trying to open with their water bending gives Densa a 1.21 gigawatt love tap. But rather than healing him, Unlock stays the course with the open the portal plan. Come on, all the kid needs is some try acting. Try acting like a man. I don't think one of our first aid kits would help too much, Sergeant. After plan waterboard the portal fails, Unlock reports in to his boss. Vatu. That's right, the Water Tribe Civil War and playing Korra like a cheap fiddle, well let's just say the devil made him do it. Now for the B-plot, after a visit to Varric Studios, Mako gets pulled into a private meeting with Handsome Jack. Cement shoe fitting? We're not there yet, it's job offer time. So, corruption then. After turning down a job with better pay, more benefits, fewer hours, and a nicer boss, this is the guy who gave up being a pro athlete for the drudgery of civil service after all, Mako receives a visit from Mary Sunshine herself. And what do Lin Bei Fong and the hot dog cops find in Mako's apartment but a satchel filled with cash and explosives? Dude's got taste, I'll give him that. Obviously, he ends up being hauled away in cuffs, raving about how it was all Varric. This episode is pretty alright, we've got two and a half plots going at once, and I'm not really all that thrilled with the resulting jumble that is the guide. The idea of how exactly one gets to the spirit world is an intriguing one, and the episode wrings the appropriate amount of humor and humanity out of it. By building up Tenzin's frustrations with his spiritual mojo being low, and his revelation that he, like his siblings, just can't keep up with old Pop because he was, you know, the <laughs> Avatar. The pacing is the problem. This episode is slow in overcoming a rather visually unimpressive roadblock. For television's number one elemental action show, there's not really very much elemental action. You poor thing. Did the season title Spirits confuse you in some way? Most of the interesting stuff actually happens on Unlock's family vacation to the spirit world. We see a rift beginning to develop between Eska, Densa, and their father, as well as the visual treat of three waterbenders attempting to force open the northern portal. Finally, learning Unlock is actually Aku's flunky is definitely an exciting revelation. I want to know more about just what game they're playing, and what power Vatu has over Unlock that would persuade him to help such a transparently sinister creature. I think I like the B-plot too. Varric is a neat villain. He's obviously evil, but too slimy to nail. Looked at from the outsider's perspective, Varric checks out. He hasn't actually done anything provably wrong. Now, we the audience know and trust Mako, but in the eyes of the law, he looks guilty as sin. But you know who else should know and trust Mako? Lynn. She's looked consistently bad throughout this season. All we needed was one scene of her looking at the evidence against him, and saying something like, I'm sorry, Mako, I can't help you. Lin's issues aside, Korra's done a complete 180 from the beginning of the season. She's realized her mistake firing Tenzin and is moving forward in the company of the people that she knows that she can trust. Finally, this episode is pretty, really pretty. I guess to make up for the lack of elemental foo, we're treated to some jaw-dropping locations and vistas. Now let's break down the good and the bad in Avatar Legend of Korra The Guide. On the good side, stunning locations from the Eastern Air Temple to the Spirit World, as well as the revelation of Unlock's Dark Alliance, and Korra dropping that bad attitude. On the other hand, this isn't the most exciting episode. What the show accomplishes in 22 minutes felt like it only needed 12. This is definitely the spiritual side of the Avatar we're in. So if you're feeling zen, this may be your cup of chi-enhancing tea. But if you're an action junkie, you're probably bored. Uh, yep. I give Legend of Korra The Guide 3.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching. I'm The Stupid Private. Back home.
¿Tiempo? 